Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. A funnel of pure chaotic magic. Much like those devices that allow women to pee standing up, the Cursling leads the forces of Zinch into battle, armed only with a bag of Sour Patch Kids and a far side desk calendar from 1997. So join me today as I paint the insane clown posse's newest hero in this, my audition tape, to join the Games Workshop paint tutorial team. Hello and welcome to this painting video. In this video, I will teach you how to... What? Why do I have to record this in a black sea of nothingness? So grab those paint brushes and shake those paint pots and let's get started. The first thing we need to do is undercoat the model. And I definitely used this white scar primer. I definitely did not use an airbrush because why spend $15 on a bottle of primer that will last you 1000 minis when you can use a can for $18 that will last you 40 minis. Now we're ready to grab our pots of blue paint and our scientifically tested paint palette. It's totally not just glossy paper. If you're feeling like a heretic, you can transfer your paint pots into bottles. I've even gone so far as to transfer some into bottles from other companies. We put a drop of our aquatic blue, I mean Thousand Suns Blue. This is totally Thousand Suns Blue. And I mix it with a bit of water on our palette pad. Just be sure to only put the tiniest amount of paint on your palette pad because by the time you go back to load your brush a second time, the paint will be completely dry. We're going to paint all of his armor with this blue. Here's where I'll tell you not to worry about being very messy while I do the opposite. This is mostly to make you feel bad about yourself. So you'll feel like you need to rely on videos like this in order to ever know how to paint anything properly. You may notice I'm using a very tiny brush for this step and think, wow, that would take a lifetime to be able to paint a model with that tiny brush and you'd be right. If you're using a high quality paint that was originally in a high quality paint pot, just like this totally legit Thousand Suns Blue, you won't have too many areas that will need a second coat. But just look over the model anyways and apply a second coat into any areas that still show a bit of that primer underneath. The next step is to wash the armor, but most of the shades have a bit of black put into them that will really dull down a vibrant color. So instead, I'm gonna use the new contrast paint, Luxion Purple, mixed with quite a bit of contrast medium to create a nice, vibrant purple shade to go over the armor instead. The wash will gather in all the cracks and recesses while only leaving a slight tint to the raised surfaces of the armor. Be sure to load the brush up with a good amount of wash so it gathers well where the armor meets other parts of the model. If too much wash begins to pool, just come back with a clean brush and wick it up. In order to reestablish our midtone on the raised surfaces, we'll need to come back in with our base color. I'm sure you know all of this because these are the exact same steps that have been used in every single video for the last decade, since Duncan was doing it. Oh no, I said the D word. There are two important factors for this step. First, make sure you thin down your paint a bit more than the base coat. This will give us a nice faint transition from the areas with shade that we aren't going to cover to the pure base coat color we are reapplying. You may need to use two coats of this thinned layer to reach that full opacity. Second, you always want to be pulling your paintbrush towards the brightest area of the armor, not towards the cracks and crevices. The majority of pigments are deposited at the end of a brush stroke, so we want that to happen in the brighter areas, not in the shadows. Next, we're gonna move on to that dreaded edge highlight step. For that, I'll be mixing in some blue horror, which I've conveniently found on a sidewalk, pre-transferred into this paint bottle. Sometimes, strangers can be so nice. After mixing it 50-50 with our Thousand Suns Blue, I'll share some tips that can make edge highlighting much easier. The first one deals with the most common mistake with most of our painting, including edge highlighting, and that is having way too much paint on your brush. Make sure you wick most of it off. I like to dab my brush on a paper towel before I ever have it touch the model for edge highlighting. By doing this, you're preventing too much of the paint from leaving your brush at any one point, thereby spilling over the sides of the edge. And we just do not want to end up with that untidy edge highlight. 
because no painter likes to be untidy, now do we? Next, always use the side of the brush whenever possible. I know you've heard this tip a million times, but there's no way I'm gonna get this job if I don't repeat the same four things they use in every single video. Sometimes I feel a bit like a lazy bugger, especially when I've had one too many pints at the pub the night before. That's why I use contrast paint over all the small details that no one's gonna look at anyways. Now it's time to paint the little demon bloke that's popping out of the Cursling's armor and working his part-time job as a functional left arm. So what I want to know is, this thing is called a Cursling, but what's actually the Cursling? Is it the guy in the armor, or is it that little gremlin demon dude that's coming out of the armor? If you know, tell me down in the comments. Huh? They disable all the comments in their YouTube videos? Well, I'm sure that's just because they don't want to get overwhelmed with all the positive feedback. By now you're noticing that I'm not walking you through the step-by-step -step on how to paint this albino Ridley Scott alien. Hey, I just realized this thing is actually a chestburster too. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Anyway, the reason I'm not walking you through how to paint the alien is because it's the exact same steps we used to paint the armor. Base coat, wash, and then build back up the highlights in a few stages. The important thing to keep in mind while doing organic surfaces like all this skin and muscle is that using thinned paint over many thin layers will get you that smooth box art look that we all strive for. If you have a detail of the model that you don't know what to do with, like the scale on this bugger's arm here, just grab a bottle of your favorite contrast paint and slap it on. Because the undercoat's the same, it's gonna look amazing every time. When it came to deciding which color of gold to paint all the trim on this model, I couldn't decide between a rich, warm gold and a nice, bright yellow gold. So in this situation, it's okay to just paint one little section of the model with each color and decide which one you like best. I'm thinking the bright yellow gold will look better, so now we begin the painstaking process of painting all of this trim, hoping to God I don't actually get any of that on the completed blue armor. But if you do happen to get some of the gold on that blue armor, which will happen if you're anything like me, just have a clean, damp brush on hand and wick away the mistake as soon as it happens. Rinse that brush and repeat the process a few times and the mistake should completely disappear. The main reason I went with the brighter gold color is because I knew that I was going to come in with a nice warm wash of Reichland Flesh Shade anyway. The brighter the base coat, the more pop and impact the shadows you'll create with a wash. I'm mixing in a bit of bright silver to my base gold color to do all the edge highlights. This will make them really stand out while still feeling like gold. I didn't come back in and reestablish the base tone with the golds on all the trim because it's so tiny and fiddly and I'm lazy. The silvers are an accent piece on this model, so let's not put too much work into them either. A simple base coat and wash will suffice. I do use Druki Violet on all the scale mail, so it fits in well with all the purple shade we've added to the armor. I have a bit of a confession to make. I am uh, slowly losing my mind doing these same three steps over and over. So for the rest of this video, we're throwing out the script. I really want to show you wet blending even though they feel that that technique doesn't exist. To show you how easy it is, here is an unedited shot of me blending Wild Rider Red into Corn Red in just a few seconds. The key to this is to be ready with both paints on your palette. So when you finish placing the first color, you quickly rinse and dry your brush and grab the second color before the first begins to dry. This blend doesn't need to be perfect, especially since I'm going to go over the whole blade with a wash of numb oil, so the imperfections won't even be noticeable. 
I then do a few extra thin coats of Nuln Oil near the tip of the blade to push our blend even darker. And to finish up the blade, we're gonna go back to edge highlighting. Look, I know I'm ragging on doing the same steps over and over again. Edge highlighting really is an extremely important technique for our hobby. Nothing else defines shapes, separates materials, and draws the eyes like a model with a bunch of crisp edge highlights. So as frustrating as edge highlighting can certainly be, don't give up on yourself. The more you practice it, the better you're going to get. And at the end of the day, you're gonna have much cooler looking models because you took the time to practice your edge highlighting. According to the box art, all the feathers of our albino alien here need to be painted like a Mardi Gras float. So I'll just grab some pastel purple, red, and blue and put in some more practice with wet blending, tackling the feathers in the same way I did the sword. To define all of our blends and bring out all of those beautifully sculpted tiny feather details, I'm going to put a wash over all of the feathers. Where the purple and blue meet on the back of the demon, I'm going to wet blend Druki Violet with some Drakenhof Nightshade to create a nice smooth transition from purple to blue in the shadows as well. Highlighting a ton of tiny details like all of these little feathers can feel like a waste of time and quite frankly be overwhelming. But don't feel like you need to hit every little detail and edge. But don't be afraid to pump up the brightness, especially near the tips of each feather. And as we rush our way through the base, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for the opportunity for me to submit this audition tape with you all. I'm sure you will see that I have the passion to create. What? I didn't, I didn't get the job. The, the video's not even over yet. How did they see it? Fuck it. I'm going to release this video anyway, because if you, the miniature painters of the world want to see it, then it deserves to be seen. You're the only ones whose opinion matters in this hobby anyways. So if you like weird ideas like this one, let me know down in the comments and no, I won't disable those comments. And if you like what I do and want to support me, there's a couple of things you can do. One, you can pick up some Ninjon merch down in the merch store, as well as use my affiliate links when see all the cool gear that I use, as well as where I buy my models and my paints at a discount. And finally, and most importantly, you can check out the Ninjon Patreon, where a couple bucks a month will get you some fun rewards, as well as access to me, where we can talk about weird stuff and come up with cool ideas for weird videos just like this one. So until next time, death to the false emperor, and make sure you find some time in your day to slay the gray. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace and I just recently started my own website using Squarespace and it was incredibly easy to set up. Not only is having your own website great for showcasing your hobby or your interests, you can also create members only content and you can manage those members. You can send them emails, letting them know about updates. They can know whenever you post a new tutorial or blog, everything is easy to use on one platform. So head on over to squarespace.com for your free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash ninjan for 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video.